This is a RC plane I built. And this is at least 100 gigabytes and 4 years of footage of said plane in one video. There is building, challenges, great artistry, epic montages, flying and whatever this is. So if you're someone with an interest in aviation, RC or you just want to watch something different, well, stick around. I've always had a great interest in aviation and I have built tons of these tiny plane models. Most are out of paper and cardboard, but there are some made out of wood, metal, felt and even gingerbread. Wherever I end up, chances are I'm going to build a plane. So when I finally learned to fly a model aircraft, it was only a matter of time before I tried to build one. I've always been a huge flight test fan, so of course it was going to be one of their designs, but choosing one wasn't so easy. Luckily though, I found Custom FPV, a great YouTube channel that has tons of videos on pretty much every flight test design there is. And so, after lots of YouTube, I ultimately decided on the FT Mustang. Then I absolutely swarmed the Discord server with questions. A thousand questions later, I bought the materials, electronics and of course a ton of hot glue. And while I waited a bit to start cutting the actual foam, me and the Discord gang got the electronics ready in the meantime. There were transmitter programming and ESC programming and uh, apparently all server connectors do not fit each other. Um, when summer rolled around, it was finally time to start building. I printed out the plans, taped them together, cut out the paper pieces, taped them on the foam board and then started cutting out the pieces. This is actually really easy and intuitive, but it is tedious and I remember feeling really sore in my hands after all of that cutting. Soon enough I had all pieces before me and I could start the assembly. I installed the elevator and rudder servo and then glued together the fuselage and tail section. I glued on the turtle deck and then started working on the wing, first installing the spar and then the aileron servos. Each wing half is then glued and folded over and then joined together at the correct angle. And there we have a wing. Putting everything together, I realized that my turtle deck was a total catastrophe, so I decided to remove it. I then installed these control horns and push rods to connect the control surfaces to the servos. And while almost finished at this point, I just stopped building for some reason. I don't really remember what happened, but when I finally wiped off the dust and brought out the plane again, a whole year had passed. Either way, I had three things left to do. Fixing the turtle deck, installing the power pod and fixing the rudder control horn which had been broken under mysterious circumstances. I was a bit unsure of how the power pod should have been mounted in the airframe. The instructions told me to install it like this, which leaves a lot of gaps. I thought that was strange since it fits so well with the flap down, but apparently this was by design for the thrust angle. So I stabbed it into place. I then realized that the battery wire from the ESC had nowhere to go, so I fixed that. Power was now sorted and the rudder control horn was up next. I don't know what happened here, but I just drilled a new hole and made the push rod a bit longer. Lastly, I got some thicker paper and just YOLO'd a new turtle deck. Well, just like that, actual years later, the plane was ready for its maiden flight. For those of you who've never maiden the plane before, shucking an airplane you've never flown before, especially if you spend many hours building it not knowing how or even if it will fly, well, it can get your nerves going pretty good. Well, as it turns out, it wasn't more dramatic than that. I just flew. The flying part kicked in and soon I was flying pretty normally. I had quite high throws on there, so I was just real gentle on the sticks, half throttle, and as you can see, she cruises real happily up there. Although great in the air, every plane must come down eventually, so I tested some low speed handling and stalling, and she seemed to be pretty forgiving. I made my way downwind and begun the approach. I guess this would be a good time to say that I've never actually landed a plane without landing gear. Okay, here we go. Come on. There we go. On the ground in one piece. I did another flight where I did a few rolls, flew upside down and just had some fun. This was honestly such an achievement. After all of that building, I made a plane basically all by myself. And not only that, it flew great. One thing that maybe wasn't so great was the looks. I mean, an all white plane looks a bit boring. And while there are some really talented people that can paint our planes, I'm not one of them. But I still thought I could do something. A black canopy seemed simple enough, so I drew some lines and started painting, but once again I'm no painter and that turned out terrible. I instead got some black paper and traced the canopy shape and made this. I mean, I think that's a big improvement. I also printed out some Swedish Air Force roundels and put those on. 
And while I'm certainly no Picasso, I do think that looks pretty cool. I had no clue what to do next with this video, but my friend and I went out to get some cool footage or something. Debatable, I guess. Anyway, we definitely did some cool flying. Until this happened. The plane still flew fine, but the propeller sounded a bit odd. I decided to land to see what happened and... Well, here's what the prop looked like. Hmm... Also, the spinner was gone, so I believe it must have kind of flown off and hit the propeller. Either way, I had another prop, so we went flying again. I did manage to break the motor mount on landing, but ah, that's a successful fight for me. A good ending for a YouTube video though? Uh, not really. I've been building this plane and also filming this video about it for, well, over three years. And I just keep on filming stuff and sooner or later this is gonna turn into a three hour long movie. So I thought that I would finally put an end to this project. Now, I didn't think much of it when I said it, but now when I'm actually at the field, I think that might have taken a more li literal meaning than what I thought in the beginning. You see, it's really windy at the field. I mean, it's uh, 5 meters per second with 9 meters per second in the gusts, which is a lot of wind. As you can see, the wind hasn't gotten any better at all. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna send it. <gasps> just a little nervous. Oh, I'm just gonna send it. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Max the volume. Yes. Why is there a big gust right now? It, it is, no, just stop it. Um, it is flying. Let's see, can we do a roll? Yes, we can. <laughs> Look at that. We're, oh, we can almost be stationary in there. Oh. I think the hardest part is the landing. If you get some sort of uh, ground effect uh, combined with gusts uh, on your way down. But just flying up at altitude, it handles like a champ. Oh, that was stupid. Wing over, wing over, wing over. Yes. I guess I should start practicing a landing then. I mean, this would probably work. She's handling pretty good. Yeah, this is going to be great. Let's do it for real this time. Oh, that's the, the timer. <laughs> a lot of gusts. More throttle, more throttle, more throttle, more throttle, more throttle, more throttle, more throttle. More throttle. Dude, I did it! Woo! You might be wondering how this plane flies. Well, I'll let this funny guy tell you all about that too. <clears throat> Alright, let's see if I can get this thing flying. Oh, it's not supposed to sound like that. Speed-wise, this plane... 
I don't think it's that fast at all. Uh, there's quite a big battery and this one is a 2300. I think it's really relaxing to fly. It, if you want it to, it can fly around really smooth like I'm trying to do right now in the gusty wind. Or if you want to, you can punch the throttle and uh, do rolls or fly inverted. Or um, let's see if I can do a roll. Yes, it can fly inverted. It can do rolls, better rolls, uh, normal loops. I don't know, Inman Cubanate. Uh, those kinds of stuff. Uh, knife edge, no, but I mean, you probably wouldn't expect that from a warbird anyway. So yeah, it, it does the um, classic aerobatics. Yep. Okay, so quite a crazy thing happened. I was just out flying the last pack of the day and, you know, I was doing great, doing everything you could possibly imagine. Flying inverted, rolls, barrel rolls, split S. Um, anyhow, I was flying upside down, going supersonic on the downwind, and then the wing rocked. I guess it just, it moved. And, you know, the wing shouldn't move. This is quite interesting what I managed to do. Where the glue once was, it's a gap here. And that's because, well, um, the wing has um, separated from the plane, but I managed to land it. So we actually saved the plane this time. At first I thought the wing had just moved a bit, but as it turns out, it was a bit more severe than that. It's actually crazy that I managed to land this plane just like normal. The wing had broken right along the middle, but I was able to fix that with some glue and tape, and I can happily report that there's been multiple flights since then with no issues. I have a feeling I might fly this one until it falls apart, because it's just so much fun to fly. I don't know if it's the flying that I built it or the journey to get here, but there surely is something special about this plane. If you found this video entertaining, then maybe go watch one of these videos next. They are about as chaotic as this one, so that might be something to watch. Either way, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one. Good night.